Hey guys, this is the Villains the Man. I am Evan the Great. I'm Smiley. And today we're here to do another episode of Monsters Matter. Henchmen, please turn your handbooks to page 65. As we start today's adventure, you began to delve in through the underdark, trying to find your way back to the surface. You've escaped the chains of the drow and made a name for yourself, some mental brands, and for doing so. Many of the matron mothers have convened to place a bounty on your heads. You laugh it off. See it as a mark of honor amongst yourselves. Several times you've thwarted the drow. Several battles and encounters. You came out on top. But when you came across the pretty drow maiden offering to stay at your camp for the night, you and your fellows laughed and accepted. Thanking you more than a match for one drow maiden. What you did not expect was that her skin to start to melt. A large central red eye emerged from within as her body twists and contorts to a half melted candle, and then further transforms into that of a giant spider. Pro initiative for the yoke law. We're gonna wipe. So, Evan, what do you know about Yoko Law? Man, the Yoko Law, from what I know, because we just encountered one, is uh, they're a very crafty, evil, manipulative, but they're very, uh, they they follow law <coughs> to the T. Oh, yeah. They take the form of a drow uh, on our, world, our realm, and... They take care of business. They are very poisonous. They have a big spider that can bite people and poison them. Uh, in their regular form, they can also poison them by hitting them. And then, uh, there's one more I'm missing, right? Hmm? Yeah, I think that's it. This, yeah, this is yeah, drought form. They are very, uh, they're very simple. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're innate spellcasters. <laughs> they have some magics because they're uh, a follower of law. I uh, like their dominant person. Yes. I do not like... I don't want to waste a turn casting web as an action. No. Like, in combat setting, it's very impractical. In my opinion, anyways. That's one of the problems with it. Well, a lot of characters have range abilities or ways to get out of that. So, it sounds good. Well, it's more along the lines of she doesn't have a way to take advantage of it. Yeah. Now, if it web went on you and a bunch of spy, like swarm of spiders got all over you while you're on the web, different story. Yeah, like if I suppose you could set up an encounter for it to work with swarms of spiders and stuff like that, but just just right, you don't fight. I get these when we're doing these videos. The you web them into the wall, and then all the drow minions that she's with, they all turn into spiders. They're illusion, and then they climb on the web and start biting you. Why not stuff spiders? Do? It's cooler because she made yeah. illusions that look like drow and then she turned into a drow. They're really not drow at all. So why not just have them with spiders from the beginning? That would be more horrifying. Fighting monster spiders as opposed to people. Good idea. Mm. Anyway. No, fuck it, the riders. <laughs> I was going to say drow riding on spiders and then. No, you can definitely like, take advantage of uh, <laughs> web walking. No, drow riding a spider axe is pretty solid. Yeah. And the giant spider like steeders and stuff. Sweet. You definitely take, take advantage of Web Walker with the Web spell. Yeah. But Web is like a second, first or second level spell that every Drow can cast. Why have your big demon cast it with its action instead? That's my problem. If you want to pair it up with other monsters, if you find just the monster by itself, I don't see a point in using Web. Um, and let's just try to escape. You can make web web a uh, bonus action for it. I like to take. Th I like having to detect thoughts though. Yeah. Well, I, th I don't know before we modify it. Any detect thoughts is very good for um role play. Yeah. Uh, especially with the because she always has an inkling as to what you're thinking. That's very mean. A lot of players may not like that. I like like that aspect of it though. When she passed out when she read the grounds. <laughs> she was unimpressed. <laughs> Oh, Grom. So what What else do we have besides the, uh, all this different... They, they're also... Uh, well, they're demons, so they're resistant magic, yeah. to most damage of the game. That's what I like about demons. They're resistant to the three core elements. Uh, cold, fire, and lightning. 
you know, they're the most common forms of damage, like elemental wise. Um, non magical weapons, immune to poison, poison condition, dark vision, uh, abyssal, elvish, undercommon. <laughs> Just reading the whole thing now. But, um, and they can change the shapes, like you said. Yeah. Drow, spider, demon. Uh, they have web walker and spider climbing to get around like spiders do. I like how they basically set up to that no matter what form it's in, it does, has the same everything. Yeah, that could be very scary. I, I kind of find that it's very boring, though. It's just, it's just a different shape now. No, just think about it. The <coughs> Yoke Law. What if there's multiple yeah. Yoke Law? And they all turn into these drow. And they pretend to be something else to lure like a group of paladins to them. And they're really demons wanting to get rid of the righteous warriors. Well, if you are a righteous paladin, why are you walking towards a drow that you know to be kind of evil? No, I'm just saying. Plus, you have a They and will use that to draw them out. To, where the paladins will be unexpected that they're a demon. Because they think they're drow. If I was a paladin and every car is still a drow, I'd be like, hold up. What's my divine sense say? <laughs> Dude, that's just me. I was waiting for you to do that before, and you never did. Hey. But I believe you're also out of spell slots, so... Yeah, it gets funny. Grom don't do that all the time. Just sometimes. But anyway. Like, Grom is chronically out of spell slots. Just a lot of... I don't know, man. I, I see shape changing is big advantage. They can really... Uh, just thematically, people. not mechanically. For... We don't have, have no idea how long this drow has been like this in, our, in the game. That's just for example. Yeah. Like, wow. I That's just, what I'm saying. It's, it's a thematic device. Yeah. Uh, more than anything, if you want to trick the players of thinking that they're fighting a giant spider when they're actually fighting a demon. Because if you're fighting a giant spider, your tactics won't change much. But if that giant spider is actually a demon, then you have to go take a different approach because mundane means don't usually affect them as much. Yep. But what can, what can we do? Like, it has misform. Misform school. Um, now I see it as a bit of an escape tactic because they don't get teleport. I uh, also feel that these are prime clerics. As well. It's easier to add, like, yeah. spellcasting, like, arcane spellcasting monsters. Yoke Law is one of the few things I can see getting divine spellcasting. Now, you were you were looking into Yoke Law and found a bunch of stuff out of, out of them. Yeah, I found out a few things about the Yoke Law. Um, one thing, uh, which I found out looking through, uh, is Loth created the Yoke Law from basically a succubus that she captured from the layers of the abyss and she never revealed how she transformed it into a yoke law but during the process it made the yoke law remember nothing of its former life and it's completely loyal to the new mistress and that is why the yoke law are very loyal servants for loth and they will only follow loth and only listen to loth you see I never knew that and I think, I think that's actually a really badass background for them. Um, they're master spies and taskmasters for that purpose. Uh, that's why they're so cunning and uh, gathering information and blending into the drow society. Because it all fits. More higher up henchmen, I would say, kind of. Oh, yeah. But the only henchmen to loft do. Yeah. Um, now, if you're playing with a priestess, a drow priestess, which is a CR8 creature, can summon a yoke law, which is a CR10 creature. I learned yeah. something. Did not know that. <laughs> uh, that's she threatened it at the very beginning of her campaign. Hmm. Um, now, when you're fighting a yoke law, you have to be careful of their slam, slash, bite, or whatever the hell form she's in. Because. She gets two in a round, and it does 7d6 fucking damage. Yep. Uh, poison, though. So, Worms will have a nice little time getting around that for a minute. Grom. Probably not, though. He only has, like, 20 hit points. <clears throat> no, but, um, God, they're sitting at about an average of, like, 26 damage, give or take. Uh, plus maybe a little bit, 20, maybe twenty-five. So they they are definitely like threatening. That's one of the things where they dumbed down a lot of the monsters in Five E. I feel like, and the Yoke Law was one of them. But I feel they are fairly iconic with seeing how they pulled Wolfgar. 
Yeah, stuff like that in the, the dress books. They did. Um, they're also resistance to, like you said, all the three forms of uh, fire or what a fire, cold fire, and yeah, lighting. and a lot of, and they do poison. So they're very elemental kind of base if you think about it. You all it down. the demons are actually. Yeah, the um, acid floats around in and out of it, but. There for a while, the abyss was actually the elemental planes. They, the abyss was thrown into the elemental chaos. That will explain some of that. Um, see, I, I like random useless lore. What, what else? He finds the important things. I try to find the important things. Well, it depends on what I'm doing. <laughs> I try to think of stuff, too. Sometimes it's cool, and sometimes it gets bashed. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, overall, is there anything else we're missing? Basically, they're just they're a demon. That can shape change, and they worship law. They and, have like four or five saving throw proficiencies. Yeah. I mean, there ain't a whole lot to them, but they're so good at what they do. It's, they are one of the only monsters off the top of my head that actually has proficiencies in role playing skills. Yeah, they are proficient in insight and deception, and they can read your thoughts. What's if you're what's to me that translates into passive skills, so I don't have to roll anything, so you don't know if I roll anything. Being a DC 20 inside check to to, to insight its deception, and a DC 16 a deception, bluff, or persuasion check. I can see a lot of high level yoke law with what you just said being high powered people inside of. This, you know, the places in yeah. the Underdark. Because of how them abilities would work together, they'd be able to basically manipulate and talk their way in and out of everything until it's time to strike. I do, I do, I do like the Yoke Claw because this one is, yeah, I've already mentioned it. Like, it's the only real creature that it and a few of devils you can just slap on cleric to. Only a few things you can do that to that makes sense. Yeah. The Yoke Claw's one of them. Um, Yoke Claw's Pit Fiends, stuff like that. And to me, that, that how, how rarely I'm able to do that, and it makes sense. This makes me happy. <laughs> but I would definitely give it just a few levels of a cleric for thematicism. Yeah. I may or may not have already done that. You do not know. He did. <laughs> um, yeah uh, besides that is there anything else we need before I I close this out here what is your opinion of the Yoke Claw my opinion on first encountering one in our game session and look, you know researching and looking at it uh, on the, on the, in the monster manual here is they are to me they're an amazing like you said role play monster who is a pretty big threat for lower level parties but once you get to its challenge rating yeah. I don't think it is very good for combat wise but before that very good see I feel like they're weak combat wise but amazing for RP what I'm talking about if you RP yeah. them up from like, le like third level 3 yeah. you can RP them for a while and if they encounter just before they get to no, the proper level like it be, versus weaknesses. Yeah. I feel they are a great thematic monster with strong role play potential yeah, that is what I think of it. But I wish they could do something more with their action than slam slam. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes out to with Alice Reading, that's mainly what you'll be doing the entire time slam slam. Uh, Dominate monster once, slam slam. True. If that Dominate goes off, that'll be an entirely different battle altogether. That would be a fun battle for me. Well, speaking of Dominate. You all make your says. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> the the slimy spider-like creature that stands before you, adventurers, that was just a beautiful maiden, I guess you could say, turns into this giant spider. Freaks your adventurers out as you're getting all your gear and everything, and you turn around to find out that you have been indeed trapped. Um, you strike forth this giant beast, some type of shape changer that you have no idea. 
your party starts fighting the spider it bites the food out of you you get poisoned and then the spider takes form back into the one-eyed I don't know what would you call this the one-eyed half melted uh, candlestick mount half melted candlestick and it's just very translucent looking with the wax melting kind of look on it as the party's really mesmerized on what exactly this is as it continues to hit them but they don't they're not ready for what happens they take a lot of poison in this form as well and it's able to sink through the veins as party members drop one after another and get flung into the walls and get webbed and before you know it everybody is unconscious and they're sitting against the walls they're wondering how this happened what's happening next as the light goes to dark and they lose consciousness for good you've been struck by a smooth applause Yeah,